Hi and welcome back to the Batty.com channel. My name is Brian Thompson and today we're going to show you how to remove a 1990 through 1996 HVAC programmer module. Step one is to disconnect the battery. We're going to use a standard 5 16 inch battery wrench and we're going to disconnect the positive terminal. Okay, and we'll set that battery cable off to the side. Next step in removing the instrument panel is to remove the plastic carpeted panel below the steering wheel. To do that, we'll remove the two screws on the end first. Okay, those screws are located here and here. To get those screws out, we're going to use a Torx 15 on the screw closest to the driver. And we're going to use a 9 32nd inch socket for clearance on the screw closest to the front of the car. Okay, so the next step is to remove the two screws on the front of that panel. Those are going to be a 9 32nd inch screw, and they're located here and here. To do that, we're going to use a 9 32nd inch socket. The two screws closest to the driver are circled here in yellow. At the bottom of that panel, there are three screws. The locations are shown in red here. All five of those screws are 9 32nd inch, and we'll remove those all to remove this panel. On the back side of this panel, we're going to see lighting. We've got some wires connected to a light. We're going to pry the two clear tabs back, back away from the connector, and pull the connector free. Next, we're going to remove the metal crush panel below the steering wheel. We're going to remove bolts located here and here. Uh, we're going to use a standard 10 millimeter socket to remove those bolts. Next, we're going to remove the two screws on the left side which are located here and here. We're going to use that same 10 millimeter socket. And we're going to go ahead and remove the crush panel and set it aside. What we see here is that uh, while the all of the bolts have uh, 10 millimeter heads, uh, the two that were on the left are the, the bigger ones, the two that are on the right are the smaller ones. We have removed the black plastic trim below the steering wheel and the metal crush panel. And what we see here, this is the programmer module. We're going to use a 9 32nd inch socket to remove a bolt on the bottom left corner. This is the only bolt that holds the programmer in place. So at this point we're going to lift the programmer away from the firewall. Okay. Now we're still attached by the vacuum lines and the electrical connector, so we're going to be very careful not to damage anything at this point. The, the green silicon block with the, vac the colored vacuum lines is held in place by a metal keeper. It's kind of a one-way push-on nut, and in order to remove it, we're going to use a standard set of needle-nose pliers. We're going to place those in the center of the vacuum lines, 
and carefully unscrew it. Those are the rustiest, ugliest needle nose pliers I can possibly imagine us using. We're going to work those rusty needle nose pliers down into the center of the, of the vacuum lines and we're going to carefully rotate counterclockwise. And we're going to do this about a thousand times until that metal keeper comes off. Uh, what we're showing you here in actual time took us about two hours to accomplish. So please don't think this is easy. It is not. And once the metal keeper comes off, the block of vacuum lines should pull away from the programmer module as an assembly. You're going to gently rock that, that green block from side to side. These need to come off as an assembly. It is not possible to remove the vacuum lines individually. The only thing holding the programmer at this point is the electrical connector. We can see the tab that's holding it in place. We're manipulating this around an air duct. Now if we look on the back side of the connector, we'll see a blue connector with a gray release tab. We'll press the gray release tab and pull the blue connector gently from side to side to remove it. I would seriously consider hiring this done because it's been a nightmare. When the connector comes free, the programmer module is loose and it can be sent in to us for service. Today, while we have this programmer on the bench, we're going to get you a close-up we're going to get you a close-up of the vacuum block and how it attaches to the programmer. As we can see, there's a metal post protruding up from the center of the vacuum port here. Notice the chamfered corner at the top left of the vacuum block. It attaches in this orientation. When we press that firmly in place, again we'll see the metal stud protruding from the top. The way this attaches is with a washer. Next, this one-way push-on nut goes over the center of the stud in the center of the vacuum lines to hold everything in place. We'll put the washer in place. We'll notice that there's a slight cone shape to this one-way washer. We'll put it with the cone pointing up and then we have a choice. We can either use needle nose pliers, rotate the washer back down into place, or we can install it as it was intended. We're going to use this uh, socket or nut driver to press it into place. Okay. And if we look closely, we'll see it. We'll see this keeper in place. This is also what it looks like when we're reinstalling the programmer in the car. Next, we're going to show you how to remove that keeper. This is a little bit more difficult while you're standing on your head in the floorboards of the car. We'll use some needle nose pliers. We're going to turn that keeper counterclockwise. We can see the keeper is about halfway off at this point. We'll just keep doing that, keep rotating it. We've made a little bit more progress. This does take some patience, but eventually we'll work that keeper up to the top of the bolt and we'll set it aside. Next, if we look closely, we'll see a washer in the center. We'll go ahead and remove the washer. And next, we'll use a small flat blade screwdriver to gently lift the vacuum line block away from the programmer. We're rocking it gently from side to side. And here we see that all of the vacuum lines have come off 
as an assembly and we've not damaged the vacuum ports on the programmer itself. And here we see the vacuum block, we see the washer, and we see the keeper. My name is Brian Thompson and I founded the website Batty.com where you can find more free information and videos to fix Corvette electronics. You can also find the parts and tools you see us using in the videos. Thanks to your support, I'm proud to say that 10 Americans have jobs. Hi friends, 20 years of experience can make these repairs look easier than they really are. But don't worry, we have your back. If you're not getting the results you see here, then stop and pack it up and send it to us. We have the parts, the tools, and the experience needed to do the job right.